everybody. Sandy here. Today we're going to be doing a tumbler with Tacket, and I've already put Tacket on my tumbler, just so y'all didn't have to sit through all that. Um, I used my mixed Tacket, which is 70% Tacket and 30% water. Um, you don't have to water down your tacket. I just find that it goes on a little smoother and it also doesn't use as much. There are two layers on here and we're going to be using some mica powders and this is actually a soap dye but um, yeah, it's still mica powders. So this one is pearl, and the reason why I went with pearl is because it does throw a bit of a goldish tint. So we're going we're going to go ahead and do that. And I want to show you, and I should have had it right here. Give me one second to grab it. I want to show you what we're going to do over top of that. This is a poured painting that I did, oh, I don't know, maybe two years ago. Um, and I really like it, but it's just been sitting on a shelf. But what I did was a swipe. And if you know anything about poured paintings, and I know a lot of us start it that way, um, you'll know that the swipe is to put your colors down um, in the middle and then you use a black or a white or a, a contrasting color to pull over top of your paints that you have. Now, one thing I want to point out is that you can see the cells that are on this painting. And I wanted to use the actual canvas. But um, I'm pretty sure that I used silicone to get those cells. So, I did something that's pretty close to next to the same thing, but I took a picture of it, and then I printed it out on water slide paper. So, this hasn't been treated yet. It will be. Um, I wanted to get my um, mica powders on my cup first. But this is what we're using. Now, you're probably wondering, um, wait a minute, Cricut does not allow you to make an image that big. However, if you send a picture to your email, and then from your email, pull up that picture, then you can go into your printer and rearrange the size. And that's what I've done for this. So, I know a lot of people use... Um, Microsoft Word, but I don't have Microsoft Word because I don't want to pay $100 a year for something that I might or might not use. So anyway, this works, and this is what we're going to be putting on the outside of this tumbler. And the reason why I want to use the pearl is because I want there to be a lightness, but I don't want white on here. So I'm hoping that this works. And I have um, a few extra powders oops, over on the side, just in case there's not enough here, but I'm pretty sure there will be. And I'm just going to use this fluffy brush that I've used for other things as far as my mica powders go and I'm just gonna apply this and I think you can see look at the dust fly holy moly you might be able to see the gold hue to this and I think that's going to be what is needed behind that water slide of course we'll epoxy over top of this and I'm really laying it on here because I, I want that gold to kind of not show through, but I want it to have a certain amount of shimmer. Now, I do want to keep my strokes up and down because the pattern is up and down. 
and when it shows through, I want it to um, all be in the same direction, if that makes any sense to you. All right, so I'm satisfied with that. We're going to get cleaned up. I will epoxy this and we'll be back once the epoxy is set. So stay tuned. We're back with our epoxy coated tumbler. This has two coats of epoxy. Uh, the first one I put extreme resin on and it has a very thin consistency. I guess that's a low viscosity. Um, and it goes on bubble free the whole bit. It's, I mean, it, it really is a nice resin. Um, thin coats, which we should be doing anyway. Um, and then I did a second coat with my Pro Marine because I wanted it just a little bit beefier. Um, one thing I will say about the extreme resin epoxy is that it likes the cooler temperatures. So if you live in a region such as me, upstate New York, um, where you know you you get the cold, um, that resin works really well for colder temperatures. I just want to I just want to put that in there. Um, so what I've done is I have trimmed my um, water slide. I'm not sure that I did it. I'm not sure that it's going to work out, but I'm going to try. Um, I've got my warm water over here, and from the looks of it, it's not going to really fit in there very well. I don't really want to futz around too much. I am going to get myself a bigger container. We now have a big enough container. Doing a full water slide, it's like, mm, you really don't want to be jamming it as much or as little as possible you, you want to move it around. I'm going to throw it in here. We're just going to go ahead and get started because it's going to take a little bit for it to uh, to lift off the paper. I am using the Hippo water slide paper. Um, I sprayed this with Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear Spray. Because I, I just, I don't know, the mat seems to to leave a fog type of finish, and I really don't like that. I wanted this as clear as possible. It looks like we might be already sliding here. All right, and we need to put water on here. And we need a lot on here because I'm going to do the face down method and slide off and heaven help me if I don't get this straight because there's not a lot of room for play, but we're going to try. I want that good and wet underneath there so that it continues to wet the, the tumbler. There. Okay. 
Okay. Fingers crossed, folks. Fingers crossed. I have coffee filters over here to work out the water. Don't talk a lot, Sandy. Just do it. Just want to make sure. And I'm looking for the darker end of this to be the top of my cup. And so then I am Now, I did try to mark it off as to where I wanted it all to go. We'll see how I do. Uh, when that back starts sliding off, you just have no room for error. And... I'm just hopefully staying in frame. I think I have a bit of a, a shift here. Maybe not. Maybe not too bad. This part can come up. No. Okay. Here's what we've got. We've got. We've got. And I think I've got it on there tight enough. My problem is that when I do this, it wants to introduce bubbles, and I don't like that. Okay, we are on here, and she's already sliding. There we go. Okay, so this part's off. I am going to reserve some of my glue there, and then I'm going to start working the bubbles. I do have overlap here. I may change that. See, this is the only problem with doing it face down is that you really give yourself very little wiggle room, especially on a tapered tumbler. Now, if I have to, I can come back through there with my alcohol inks and touch up. Right now, I'm just focusing on getting any wrinkles and bubbles out this did come out pretty cool though I had hoped that I would get those vivid colors now I don't know if I explained it but one of the reasons why I wanted the pearlized uh, mica powder is because this painting was painted with pearlized paints and of course you can't get that in a print that doesn't that doesn't show in a print so I wanted that to be the backer for this so that I could hopefully highlight the pearlized paints I can hear one of my chihuahuas has woke up. She heard mommy talking. And now she's barking. She's had this thing about waking up at like 5, 5.30 in the morning lately. That's never been an issue before. But all of a sudden she has adapted to that. I'm one of those people that likes my morning time alone, and that includes away from my dogs. If you're a morning person, let me know, because this, is, this seems to be the time when I can be most productive in my day. I have time to think. I have time to listen to my, my crime stories. I love listening to true crime. I'm just one of those kind of girls. There, I think we have managed to get this on here. 
and smoothed out pretty darned well. Yep, we've got the bottom is a little bit uh, on the crusty side there, and we'll get that. Just saying. All right, I'm just working out these little things on the bottom, and I'm just rattling on. So um, my next step is to, I'll probably touch that up there. I don't intend to do anything to the bottom. I don't think it needs it. It's It's got the pearlized mica on it. Um, so I will put my coat of epoxy on here, and I'm going to add the Marabou Rainbow Alcohol ink into it because I want a little extra shimmer on this, but I don't want glitter. So I will get that on here, and hopefully the next time you see it, it will be the final reveal. Wow, guys. This cup came out spectacularly. I love that I was able to use one of my own paintings to be able to make a water slide to be able to go on this tumbler. I left the seam. Don't care. That's fine. Doesn't bother me a bit. There's so much visual interest on this that I really don't think that that is a focal point, but I really just wanted you to get a, a good close-up look of this. This is, this is beautiful. It looks like alcohol ink that was purposely put where it landed. I mean, it came out great. I do want to show you, let's see if we can get around to it here. Remember the bottom, whoops, I'm a little too close to y'all. The bottom where it didn't quite make it all the way down. I used alcohol inks and I matched the designs. And I think I did pretty darn well. I think it looks good. So I matched it in so that it all would, uh, would look right. But I put uh, the rainbow alcohol ink in my epoxy and just went to town on this so I hope you really enjoy it I'm going to give you a, a quick flash of the painting that it came from and that's right here and here is the cup to match right there see that right next that's, that's the match to that. So, I'm really happy with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hey, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to, subscribe. I always try to come up with something a little different, a little new. And I really like this one. So, I hope you did too. So, until we meet again, Merry Christmas and toodles.